Hello, good evening. Welcome, Chris Hughes from Rebound Upstream Media uh, live show. Um, today I'll join Rihal Saltz with Brad the Dragons. Welcome, I hope you're well. How are you Hi. doing, my friend? I'm very well, man. Pleased with the weather as well, so very good, man. Uh, it's great to, have, great to have you on and to say, talk a bit about your career in the NBL. I'm sure you've got a lot of experience that you're able to share. Sorry, Apologies for the echo there. Um, it'd be great to sort of talk a few experiences and some other topics as well. Um, I thought we'd start a bit like hard to see you've got your latest cap on. Um, I, I hear a bit of a collector, maybe sort of go into sort of how, uh, how collecting caps started for you and what interests you with that as well. Ooh, uh, yeah, I have 72 of them. <laughs> Um, it's uh, obviously it started with just one, and then when you go in a shop, you see something nice, so you just keep buying them, and it's just it's like it, you get into the habit to get more and more and more, you know. So it's just it's how it went off, Definitely and now ending up with 72. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good, and they look good, and I think it's, it's good to have a hobby where you collect stuff, keeps the mind busy. Um, it's all part of it, especially your hobby as part of basketball culture. Um, if anyone's listening, I think it's a few caps he's still missing, and maybe you mentioned that someone you know you're missing, so maybe people who may have some spares in order to swap caps or um, get in contact with you. If any caps you're oh, you don't want to see? No, <laughs> there's no swapping, there's no swapping no. anymore. You mean the mouse? <laughs> <laughs> that's no, no chance. Go buy your own. <laughs> of course. Maybe we'll chat, it just it reminded me a bit of when I was at school and I used to collect the um the Panini stickers. I was, you were sort of I got this one, got that one, I need that one. <laughs> it just reminded me of that. But there, there are two you're missing. Uh, what caps uh, are you sort of looking to get next? Do you see them somewhere? I need to get a few of them. I need to get some Denver and Philly. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's probably. I even ha I have one Philly, but that is uh, newer. I'm collecting only Mitchell and Ness, so that's up for that. I say it's it's good to have hobby. And it's say I, I think the taps are really cool. And I say you've got quite a lot of Lakers. Once you told me before we started, is that because you're particularly interested in the wasp in the team the franchise, or is it just by chance, or you really like those taps? Is there? Are you like a, a fan of any franchise or? Mm, uh, I would say a fan of basketball. Not really like, I like Lakers. I've been Kobe fan for years, but you know, and, and it's, it's just how it is. It's just started with, you know, one and it just <clears> goes <throat> off and it's, it's like, I'm for interesting game. Let's say, you know, it's yeah, just, I yeah, I'd definitely um, relate to say I started off, my basketball is a bit different to everyone else, so I think I sort of started following the NBL, but the more I watch, more I'm interested. I say I'm probably a fan of basketball like yourself. I don't think, I say I maybe don't know more two I might follow, but I'm not upset if they lose. I'm interested to learn more about the players and different teams mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, and obviously, you know, you come from Bradford Dragons, you've had a, a good season this season. I thought maybe we talk about your journey before Bradford. Um, what what uh, made faith you to get into basketball and some of the uh, milestones uh, that you sort of look back on enjoy? Well, I started when I was six. That's like a normal age when you back home, uh, you know, start playing basketball. It's like you start like it, it's. I would say we grow up playing. Here is your choice, you know. That's a big difference here in England and in Latvia. It's like when you, when you know, when you be taught the basics and everything else, you know, you go, you, you finish your school, you know, in the, same, in the same school, for example, you have the gym available, you know, where you can go in straight after and you have the basketball practice. Where here, like, you get lucky if you have opportunity to do that, you know, and that's obviously, that's a downside for it. But so, yeah, it started when I was six and it just, 
kept going and I liked it and I enjoyed it and just fell in love with it. <laughs> Definitely. And I, I think, I think you touched on the important point of what I learned about the European basketball. There's more of a culture there. And I wonder whether you, you feel maybe what we could do to sort of replicate that. I know I've had a few people come on today, but maybe like have more PE teachers be more uh, interested in mm. basketball, next year's interest. I'm um, keen to hear what your thoughts are, because the experience of different culture, different uh, background. Uh, I wouldn't. It's. I wouldn't say it's about coaches. It's about like, like here you have academies, right? Which is like, you know, after, after whatever, what the year eleven, you know, when you when you go to yeah, a, a college or something. Uh, so we have that, like, let's say the academy is the basketball school which I graduated from. So we have like till year 13, technically you are going alongside basketball playing and, and you know, developing while you're at the school. And it's, it's, it's like a school. So basically it's basketball school. That, that, that's what it is. Uh, here in England, yeah. you have limited, really limited options, let's be honest, because it's, if you have, like, if you had a gym, right? Even the mm-hmm. school gym, which would be sacrificed just for basketball, right? And one school sees that is just might gonna start linking up, you know, and just people to see, okay, this is actually working, you know, we it's get the word and everything else out about this. But I had idea of maybe, you know, in a future just do that. But obviously you need to find a school which would agree with you to go from three till ten o'clock at night. Yeah, to open the doors just for basketball, let's say three times a week, and and you have nothing, and then you have a kids from the school, from the schools around coming in, just for that. Definitely, so, and the fact that yeah, of course, it's very really interesting to hear your feedback. I think that is a problem in the UK, maybe the lack of facilities available for young today. You also got maybe sort of uh, politics and other sports like basketball, badminton, football. And, and all that as well. I like, really appreciate your context and that say kind of have a different environment, obviously different uh culture, different setup. So really just hear that. Um I say you you've been with Bradford quite a while. I was wondering maybe some of your highlights for being Bradford, some things that you'll look back on when you finish and think, Oh, I had that was a really good season or that was a really uh, good day. Yeah, probably the, the biggest well, the highlight was as a team it was winning division two obviously it was first year in Bradford and we went undefeated and I had my friends uh Dalmans and Ray uh here as well we had other great players you know and we just just smashed it and and uh yeah that that would that was that was great I mean just you know it was and um personal achievement it was <laughs> um we, yeah, it was Solon game probably. I would say it was. It was. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that was. Um, I know <laughs> Travis probably is 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 you know a bit mad or whatever. But I send him I, I send him the video of their game recently, um, <laughs> the buzzer beater. <laughs> it was you know that that was probably the highlight of it. The you know hit a three, took the charge, and. Our coach took a timeout. He drew up the play and everything. And uh, <laughs> credit to Dre for this one, Andreas. Um, when we walked on a court, I said, "Forget what coach said. I don't usually do that. Well, sometimes." <laughs> but I said, "Don't listen. Just pass me the ball. Trust me. Just pass me the ball." And well, he did. So we won the game. People <laughs> thought awesome. where the, the game was. I think. It's- February last season, so they won a really good run. Maybe things hadn't been really worked out for you guys, but you won that game. That's to be away, at, obviously at your home, and it's sort of the meds of that game sort of carried on. You had a bit more form, <clears throat> and it was nice seeing it, the insights of the game. I thought, what were your um, memories of the game? Sort of going into the game, what were your expectations? You sort of said a bit up like the timeout and bits of it on, but 
but it ever seems to be another uh, game for Manchester it's probably quite a standout game it's for me personally like every game is the same it's I'm going in you know and playing to actually win it you know and I will give my 100% in each game even playing through the injuries and everything else you know like get some painkillers and I'm fine like I'm fine you know and and yeah basically that that that's what I done past season, you know. But particularly for that game or the games in general, it's like, yeah, there is impo- more important games and, you know, than less. But overall, like, there's no difference. You want to win it, you know. You want to go out and you're going to prove that you are a better team than the other ones, you know what I mean? And that's how it goes. Definitely, and I'm really to see what Travis' response was. I'm sure he he, he wasn't too thrilled if you said in the highlights. What was his uh, response? Ah, uh, he didn't respond. <laughs> he didn't respond to that. <laughs> Fair enough. I said it was a really good day for you guys, say, and having that buzzer beater moment. Um, was that one of your your favourite buzzer beater moments, or are there other ones that you remember? Uh, I think it was Division Two, but that that was we went to was it I think we went to Birmingham and uh, yeah I had a put back down buzzer beater it was I think there was at least four people under me uh, when I jumped so it was <laughs> that that's another one which is in you know somewhere up there which I always going to remember, it was like, I just stretched out and you just grabbed the ball and you just dunk it. And it's, I came on, came off the court and coach pushed me and asked me like, what do you do? And are you crazy? I was like, what have I done? It's like, where that came from? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Definitely. Is. I think you, you, like you say, you leave it effort on the floor, you don't have to so obviously you will have those moments to show sort of playing on fumes and trying to make sure your team gets that win. Um, obviously, this season didn't finish any the way anyone wanted us to, but um, I'm really keen to get you ask your thoughts on the ending because obviously, I think you guys were one of the toughest teams to beat. I think you were like 7 seven for 4 in the second part of the season. What were some of your memories from the, the last part of this season? What, what do you think went really well for you guys? Um, I think. What well well what went well? Um, we just trust each other really. Like we don't have we don't keep grudges on each other and stuff like that. You know it's if something has been said on the court or whatever. You know it's 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 just stays there, and that's I think that's what helps us. You know as a team, like coach can say something to us or whatever. Who gonna say that right? We just leave it up there. Like we leave it on the floor. You don't take it after the game. I was like, oh, you said this, you said that, you know. Everyone is accountable for every move, you know, and, and th- that's the most important thing, I think. Definitely. Um, and I say, it's, really, I say it's, it's a shame this season, anyway, the way it was, but obviously you guys were committed to form, and I think you guys would have made playoffs really interesting. And obviously that rivalry is so, that would have been a good one. So you seem to have that rivalry, friendly rivalry she made it with Travis and stuff, so it would have been a really good game, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, is there any other teams you sort of really look forward to playing? Is it maybe for like a personnel reason or maybe just of a, a derby element? Is there any games you sort of really uh, look forward to? Um, um, we won the game against uh, Worthing. That was one of the better games as well you know it's like i think every team is beatable and and mm, yeah definitely yeah. And I think, i'm glad you mentioned mentioned worth in the say obviously they got some young talent with cameron and obviously you mentioned about Solent, and um obviously you've been in the league for a few seasons 
do you feel like the NBL is getting stronger? Or, or what's your thoughts, Palace? Obviously, you've been in the league a while. You've probably seen quite a lot of teams. And I wonder what your um, thoughts on that were. Stronger. It, it's, it's getting more quality players, I would say. Right? But as a league, it's all... All like as a league, it's I don't know. It's it's difficult to say. It's hasn't yeah, really yeah, changed. I, I would say it, it, it has gone <laughs> down just because of you know who is up there, who is actually running all this, all the show, and and all the new rules and everything else what comes in, like you know, year year in year out. It's like. I can't, I can't say like back home we don't have that kind of stuff, right? But for the country, what we have, like uh, we are actually, let's say that and it, it's it's ridiculous. You can't compare, like no. the basketball basketball he, here and there. You know, the quality of it as well. Let's say you know, but it, it's it's. I think for England, especially, obviously, it's difficult to find the sponsors, find the money for it, right? But some some people need to open the pocket and go say, okay, this is just for the basketball, you know what I mean? Because people are investing in netball and, and other sports, but the basketball always is the last one, which I kind of don't understand for the big country, you know, for the rich country country as well. They they don't don't spend the money for the basketball, which is, you know, taking the NBA is there, right? And and Euroleague is there. They they that that's what I never understood. Never, like since day one. So, no, I think it's a bit of a head structure. Like say we've seen when NBA teams come to London, the O2 sold out in minutes. Um, the big cup final sold out. And like you say, you've got a lot of interest in NBA. We have it at Sky and other things. Um, I kind of think like if they had more televised games, maybe more sponsors would be come out because there's more yes. exposure, possibly. But yes and again, no. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, not an easy point, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's where where is actually gonna be televised, that's another thing, you know what I mean? Like that's people gonna know about it, you know, is there enough promotion for it? That's where it, what comes down as well, you know, like this I can compare this back home as well, you know, like Division one, for example, we have, we have, you know, all 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 games which are, uh, which is BBL, which is Baltic Basketball League, yeah. uh, which is Division one, Division two. They all are televised, you know, and and, but that that that's how it's always been. So I think yes, but we need to start somewhere, you know, like let's say you have a live stream on, on all these games, which Solent actually did really good job on, on talking about this, you know. Solent, th that was really good what the guys did there. Yeah. And, and so there is not who it. does it. Yeah, for some people, like, well, where the NBL's and NBL Live this season, hosting a few games on YouTube. And I think you, you mentioned really kind of point about people knowing it's out there. My feeling is that, yes, it's good to have an NBL on YouTube, but you don't tend to just fall upon something on YouTube. You tend to have to search it. Whereas, say, if it's on BBC Sport, that way you can easily fall onto it. You just be on this page that says, watch this game, we can watch that game. But yeah. it is a start, and I think, it's, like you say, it's a good thing to have them stream. And um, <clears throat> that Sony that Game of the one was televised. What were you members of that game? So it was quite a good battle. Maybe not the result you guys wanted, but it was quite a good game and obviously a good game to have on the NBL Live. What were your memories from that game? From Solon game? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just in general, you know, that... Uh, the memory, well, we, we lost the game, so there's no good memories. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sorry, of course, yeah. <laughs> But uh, overall, you know, there is people who actually goes out and trying to do something. But like you, you mentioned it, you know, that it's yeah, it's YouTube. You need to go and search it and everything else, you know. But the same you can do Facebook Live. 
you know, which is these days, it's a big thing as well. I think that would be a star somewhere, you know, people just scrolling through, oh, there is something, there is own life, something, someone shares it and it just goes, we're on YouTube actually, it's a bit difficult, you need to get, to get the link and everything else, you know, so a bit different. But, definitely, and I'm sure that the leader look at ways to improve it. I definitely, yeah, essentially, are trying to develop it. So hopefully, we'll see that develop. Um, I really, but I know we not intend to be critical. We're trying to sort of say things how they are. But I was wondering, maybe we can look at maybe some players that you've come across that you think could be playing that next level buzz in the BBL. Uh, can be players you play with, players you play against, some players you think they could probably mix up in the league buzz. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, there is players who could play BBL, right? But I would say personally, it's you have to prove it, you know, that you can play. And <laughs> well, players who could play, I'll say. Travis probably could play. He's a bit, no offense, undersized for it, you know, for, for the position he plays. But and when he when they play the uh, the BBL games, right? They, they he proved that he can do it, and and he's definitely one of them who could be there. Um, yeah, to be in BBL, BBL is obviously it's politics, right? And. Uh, I would say. How many people actually could play in Division One from BBL? You know, Definitely, there's yeah. people playing in BBL, but they come to Division One, right? And it doesn't show anything. So definitely, I, I definitely hear you there. Definitely, uh, <clears throat> obviously, let's try to see previous South BBL Cup games. You met the so BBL Trophy games. Definitely see is that maybe. The NBL teams can mix that with BBL, but I, I definitely hear you for the politics. And this. <clears throat> I think clubs are often looking for instant successes, so maybe they're not looking at the NBL as a as a sort of pond to look out and maybe looking abroad, or they have their own obviously uh, scouting networks, and obviously maybe not look at the NBL as terms of developing players rather than trying to get that. Yeah, that's that's another money. thing. Yeah. They're rather going to go out and look for some someone else somewhere around, you know, than get actual actually people from, you know, from here. Which is, I think that's why in Latvia we, we don't have many, you know, import players. It's not because we don't have money. It's because it's just the community, you know, of the basketball and the quality of it. That's why we have so many quality players. So Definitely. In the I wonder what your thoughts are because obviously you may be aware of BBLs uh, increased their Americans and are sort of picked up on it because you just mentioned there. Do you think we'll see more guys drop down? What do you think that's going to have an impact for the BBL? Uh, I, I don't, I, personally, I don't think it's the right move. They should. No. It's, it's, I don't think, you know, why, why would you have another American? Or you have people with dual nationalities, right? It's for me. It doesn't make sense. You know, it's the same like basketball England saying, "Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't have American, you know, from Division Three or something like that." It, you know, why, why not? It's you know, it's you. The team have to pick what's best for them, not best for you know. Some of the Division Three players can be better quality than Division 1 players, you know what I mean, so. Definitely, well, I hear you there. So, uh, <clears throat> doing these talks, definitely talk to guys who have played D2D3, and they say about these players who have played D1, and I think we've seen that in recent years. I think I did a speech on it last season, but quite a lot of teams from the NBL D2 uh, have that strength to keep on going, and maybe that's because of university connections or budget reasons, whatever reasons. <clears throat> and it makes for an interesting mix. And I like what you were saying. I, I see what you mean, but it's a bit of a split in the NBL. You've got 
maybe top maybe a bit stronger, maybe bottom's a little bit weaker. But I really think, like you say, funding will help. But I think a lot of clubs yeah. struggle to make ends meet. Unfortunately, it's a shame. Um, I think you've got a lot of some ideas. I thought maybe if you you say that some rules don't make sense for you, if there was one more you can change in Barca this country, what rule would you would you change and why? Well, that that would be the priority, you know, to take out that you can have just players, you know, from Division Two or Division One. It's it's not it's 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 definitely not like you know, it, it's from the club, from you know the people who actually want the guy, but they can't get him. But he have a good stats, and he, he he's really a good guy. He's you know best for the team. That's what we need. We can't get him. Right, and that's like I'm saying that from the experience because we had a guy who wanted to come over, right, and play for us, but he couldn't because he wasn't he wasn't in the criteria, you know. So yeah, that that's a shame. That's a big shame. And he he was he was sending letters and everything else, and so that that's that that should be a team's choice where the guy comes from. Definitely, you know, so I think. It, that's... <clears throat> And obviously for the player as well, that player wants to play as high as possible because the career is it's not that long. You want to play the best you need, get yourself better, chase that dream, whatever that may be. And that's a really interesting point. Um, as I really appreciate having you on. I know, I know you're a busy man. I really appreciate you having the time to chat. I thought maybe we could um, sort of finish with sort of things you've been up to recently and maybe sort of what you're planning for next season in terms of Possibly, perhaps what your expectations are. Hopefully, yeah. Hope, 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 hopefully, win. You know, hopefully, win the league. You know, that's that that should be a priority. You know, so Definitely, get everything yeah. together and and obviously, you know, prove that we can do it. And I'm pretty sure we will. Definitely, Andreas would say maybe in the cup as well. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, in the cup, that'd be quite good. I think you're a semi finalist. Two seasons there, weren't you? Um, do you remember that season well? What what made that cup run so special? Uh, which one? Sorry. I was say I think it was the national cup semi final. It was two or three seasons ago. Was it? I mean, let me just one second. Hold on here. It was yeah the eighteen nineteen season. You guys got to semi finals. I say probably oh, one uh, one for yourself. Yeah, was it? Who did we lost to? Was it Warding? I think so. Yeah, they went on. To, yeah, um, that was that was. Yeah, yeah, Warding was our kryptonite. That is like, <laughs> it's like Saul and this year. <laughs> we played against them four yeah. times last year. Couldn't get it, and and you know the same with Warding this year. No, sorry, Saul and. Um, but yeah, it's you know sometimes things fall in the right way, sometimes not. So you can't really and and wasn't meant to be. So not great, but it is what it is. Of course, definitely. And I I think you guys all the pieces in place. You definitely have the momentum coming in. And I was really looking forward to how you guys got in the playoffs. I didn't know if you had any advice to young players or people out there, so it must be tough time for some people. I thought maybe you might have some good advice for people, sort of how to sort of keep in shape and um, maybe a sort of advice for them in this current time. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. I just said, I said, I, I, said, I thought maybe to finish on maybe some advice you might have for people listening who may be struggling during this time. Oh, um... Yeah, well, probably need to need to just keep keep in shape, really. Now, especially at this time, you know, it's difficult because everything is closed. Like for me as well, like I can't go to the park because all park park is locked locked up down, you know. So there's fences in the front, and I just can't go and shoot as simply, you know. So it's it's really difficult, you know. And people who actually have you know opportunity to do this and just go and do it. Especially weather is nice now outside, you know, so 
it's, it's just a little bonus what you can have, you know, in these times. Definitely, I hear we were talking a bit earlier about you, you've been able to award for your, your, um, your son, so that was really good to get out and about if you can, so you try and keep with the lockdown measures. Um, sorry, I lost what I was saying. Um, and I think that's really good, and I think, I think it's really good advice you said about um, try to stay in shape, shoot if you can, also look after yourself, and I hope everyone's well. So it, it is um, unprecedented times, but I think. We all t keep talking to people, keep staying active and look after ourselves and also have perspective because I think it's easy to have good days but also have bad days too and it, it's okay and we'll yeah. have good days and fingers crossed we've got enough time now for to get the fires on trial. hopefully next season will run on time to say it's May now, we've got a few months so fingers crossed yeah. that all goes on. Um, thank yeah, you so much. Um, <laughs> definitely, definitely. And <laughs> I hope you guys get enough time to get ready, get a few pre season games on your belt. So it's a really yeah. good season. Thanks for coming on and stay yeah, well. Thank you and me, good man. luck for next Appreciate season. Appreciate it. You're welcome. That's fine. Definitely. Uh, you're welcome back at any time and take care. And that's a good night for me and Ricard. Take, uh, stay safe, take care. And I'm sure we'll be back yeah, on again soon. Goodbye now. Thanks. All right, take care. Bye.